All right. Good evening, everybody. Or whenever you're watching this, I don't know. If you're watching the VOD, you, it could be whatever. Um, I hope whenever it is, uh, you're having a good one. And yeah, it is Friday. Like actually Friday, not my Thursday Friday, but it is Friday Friday. So that's pretty cool. Oh man, I've got to upload VODs. I, I am so behind. You know what I may do this weekend is I may upload and po basically just post every every stream that doesn't have a VOD. I may just post all of them and get caught up. Maybe I'll do that. Hey, Taled, what's going on, buddy? Yeah, that might be a thing to do. And then, then just try to stay on top of them. Dark Inside says, good afternoon, just about to buy Pal World. Right on, do it. What's up, Dark Inside? Uh, Bela says, I bought Pal World. You enjoying it? I'm amped for those guys. They've made a grip of cash. It was worth it. Played it about 24-7 for a week. Probably never touched again, but it was intensely fun with the wife. Right on, man. I like to hear that. It's been fun watching some of the controversies. Encrypt says, I want to buy Monsters and Memories. One of these days, we're going to hold you to that. What's up, Dozakar, Chaz, Solo, Teflon Don, White Bandit? What's going on? I thought you weren't talking to me anymore. I'm glad to see that you're still talking in Discord. You're like, I'm just going to not talk anymore. I'm like, come on, man. Come on. Don't do that. Well, now everybody got quiet. Well, son of a bitch. Said I'm. I'm just not talking to people. I just strongly. Yeah. Let me start over. I'm just not talking to people. I disagree strongly with I thought I was mostly reasonable when you slapped my mouth well I didn't slap your mouth first of all I said rein it in <clears throat> you're like don't come at me son not to me to the person or whatever I'm like guys come on man <laughs> come on guys guys what's up MMO pug Serenth Nicodemus Bjorn but white bandit I like you buddy if I if I didn't feel like if, if I thought you were, if I thought you were lame or whatever, I wouldn't have even said anything. I would have just been like, whatever, time out or something. But I like you. You're just, you're so salty. Been missing streams because I've been flying around work at airport now. Go home. Man, you are constantly flying. I forgot. I'm sure you've told us what you do.
What's why? Why is it so dark in here? What is going on? Let me zone out of here. I need to, I need to take some measurements of this zone anyway. Sparrow, hello. Thank you for your for your wonderful update overview video again. Lich says like software hardware implementation. Software hardware implementation? What what industry though? Hey goblin. MMO Pug says I've been missing streams because they shut down our VPN and have to go on site for the next few weeks. Well, that sounds like it's a pain. You guys never have to apologize for missing streams. I'm the only one that has to apologize for missing streams. I'm just happy you guys pop in for a little bit. I realize you guys can't sit here for three hours with me. I realize that you can't always make it. It's always nice when you are here. It's nice when I'm doing something interesting enough for you guys to stick around or we're talking some fun shit or something. But I realize it's not always going to be the case. So never have to apologize. Um, what's up, Simon? Yo, sorry I turned up this time. That's fair, you can do that. Lich says they do command center video wall stuff, NASA and Pentagon are clients. Do you work in skiffs at all? You're allowed to say, you're just not allowed to say which skiffs. Eventually, then you get your security clearance. Ah, yeah. Cern says the only stream I can never really catch is Pattis because he is very random and when he does stream, it's either during my meetings or work or during fam time. Oh man, poor Pattis. Um, yeah. So when I was in the army, Lich, I asked, um, because when I was in the army, um, I had surgery while I was in, um, and couldn't do the usual stuff that we were doing for a few months, like leading into it. And then, oh wait, actually it was, it was after the surgery. Cause I forgot that I was, I was working all the way up until surgery because the dipshit uh, NCO, the sergeant that they left behind while everybody else went to the field. I um, I had surgery while my company was deployed to the field doing whatever. Um, and yeah, this sergeant and I really didn't get along very well. And so he had me come in the day after my surgery. <laughs> and I was not supposed to be standing. And uh, I came in, had me standing there, which was causing me to to bleed a little bit. Um, and and so I was like, he was like, if you don't want to, if you don't want to work the desk and be here, I, I literally had surgery the day before at Walter Reed. Uh, then you can go down to sick call. Then I went down to sick call, and the captain that had sit, spent months setting up my surgery was like, hey, Lord, what's going on? I'm like, hey, sir. He's like, when's your surgery? I was like, yesterday. He was like, what the hell are you doing here then? You're supposed to be in bed. <laughs> I was like, well, Sergeant Numbnuts down there uh, doesn't seem to like me and decided that uh, the order for me to be in bed uh, no longer applied. And so the uh, captain had uh, someone drive me home and tore him up it was great 
Oh man, that was an eventful period. That was an eventful period because then during that period, one of the, this just this dummy um, from our company who had broken up with his girlfriend and no longer had a place to stay. They made me take him in as a roommate. Um, and I had an, another roommate at the time and my girlfriend was there. And this dumbass shot an AK for his AK-47 through his ceiling, through the apartment bedroom above his bedroom and tried to act like nothing happened until the <laughs> until the maintenance man from uh, from the apartments came the next day with a real like nervous serious look on his face to check to see if there are any holes <laughs> in the ceiling <laughs> I'm just like oh man cuz I was in bed when he when he fired it off and I was just like oh shit I'm hopping over there around I'm like what is going on here it, it was just so yeah then the police came like shortly after arrested him took everything out of it like he just because he's 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 gone a bit goofy and we had warned the the leadership in my unit like this guy's a bit goofy he's listening to the cranberries over and over again all day loading magazines so anyway all the way back to the reason why i even mention any of this shit so after that I couldn't march, couldn't do a bunch of stuff for a while. So I wound up getting an interesting job at a nearby base. Um, I never heard of a desktop. <laughs> uh, nearby base uh, that was, uh, it dealt with some stuff. And uh, we had a skiff in there. And that was actually the first place I played Diablo, I think. I think it was Diablo 1. They had a computer in there, so I'd go into the skiff when it wasn't being used, which was like never, because uh, it was an emergency operations center, and go in and play Diablo. Uh, sounds like you're describing a private pal scene from Full Metal Jacket with that dude. It was very much the case. I'm being polite and not getting into the details, uh, but he was having some problems, and uh, yeah. So, um... Four years at Fort Bragg. Um, a buddy, of my my roommate who, my previous roommate who just got in contact with me on LinkedIn. If you're out there, Betker, say hi. Um, we got to catch up. But uh, my previous roommate wound up getting shipped to Fort Bragg. Uh, I was I was stationed at fort meyer virginia before it became um whatever it's called now joint base meyer henderson hall uh, i was in the old guard there and uh my roommate basically if you passed out twice or messed up significantly twice while you're stationed there they would send you somewhere like fort bragg so that happened i think he he passed out or fell out uh during a ceremony and they sent him to fort bragg um, how did I find out about this stream before the Twitch notifications go out? How do I find out about the stream before Twitch notifications go out? Find it odd coming into the middle of a conversation. Code and caffeine, I don't know what's going on with the notifications. Neither. Uh, I think, I think if you've got, um, if you're in Discord and you've got the notifications set up, it's kind of somewhat timely, but I don't know. I'll try to be a little more consistent. If I'm going to stream, it'll be at uh, 8 p.m. my time, which is 3 p.m. Eastern. That spider dug in his sand, sand spiders. Yeah, I think the nav mesh needs to be rebuilt in this zone, maybe. Okay, so while we're here, let me actually be productive. I gotta time something. Yeah. Subscribe to the secret webcam we put in this flat. Um, not a very interesting webcam, but feel free to subscribe. Just see me sitting around picking my nose all day.
Malins, so you're a, you were a brag at four years. What was your MOS? 11B1P or? It's because he doesn't do enough bikini streams. So Twitch uh, has him on low priority for notices. It's true. It's true. Oh, let me get my timer out so I can. What is a, uh, what's a 13B? I forget. Cannon crew member. Oh man. How was that on the noggin? Seems like a lot of concussion. Told Goblin last night him doing hot tub streams would make him hit one million viewers. It's true. Goblin is sexy. Sexy Goblin. Hot tin hot tub streams. HR. Pff. Yeah. Um you can go ahead and shoot you can shoot an email to HR. Ziggy and his Ziggy and Associates at nicheworldscult.com. What are you going to send them? Dear HR, Sean said I was sexy. Please give him a raise. He is smart. SMRT smart All right, let's time this let's time this run Oh wait, let me let me start over Reset, okay, we'll do one without without Sal The <laughs> HR only looks out for the company and company thinks hot tub streams are a good idea <laughs> Don't ruin the secret HR really does only look out for the company. If you guys do not realize that by now, please add that to your notes. All right, so I'm timing my run here. Hey, Liz Biscuits. Would it be good to have a GM tool as a timer? Slash GM timer, start, stop. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't, I don't know. Because then we'd have to have someone add it. I'd rather them add something else if I can just use my phone. We used to have like, back in my day, we used stopwatches and they ticked, see? Tick, 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 tick. Stopwatches, old fashioned kind with gears in them. Back when everything was clockwork. You see? Boot was the best time I had of all the four years I could imagine. Oh, I'm gonna watch a community member's video in a little bit, actually. The community member made a video on the YouTube and asked a question in the video, and I don't think he was meaning for it to get a response, but in this manner, but let's do it. Aaron F said, pretty row. Thank you. Zukin made it. Zukin made it for me. So are we getting a shiny metallic robe or a frog lock bone caster robe? Gotta ask Zukin. Now, it won't be called any of those things because we, we can't do that. But I like our robes, man. I like our robes so far in terms of like the animation and everything. I like our general feel. Good job, guys. Good job. Oh, speaking of which, have you guys all seen the the biome video? Demay ninety three. What are you What are you taking credit for? The whole game. Awesome.
Dark, dark in a couple spots. It depends on your monitor. Welcome to Monsters and Memories. Where for some people the game is really, really dark and for other people it's just kind of dark. Apologies for that. We need everybody to buy the same monitor, please. Was the TV? Okay, yeah. Don't do that. What do you think this is, Nintendo? Can't be watching on TV. What's wrong with you? Time for game monitor bundle to sell. Maybe we can get a uh, partnership with a, a monitor company. That may not be a bad idea. Playing the sun so even daytime is too dark? What is wrong with you? You need to get in the gamer cave with the rest of the gamers. How dare you leave mom's basement? You should... You should stay in the basement like the rest of us. Yeah, what is the sun you speak of? Well, Liz, in all fairness, you are British. So, you can actually leave the basement to not see the sun. Defiant Possum says, I feel like these streams are a town hall meeting where people are nice and generally intelligent and the discussion is fun. <laughs> I, 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 agree, I agree with you. Though, town hall meeting wouldn't be the... Like Sunday school class or something, maybe, but town hall meeting these days. <laughs> Tickles P99 said, I love the biome video. If you're answering questions, I'd love to know your policy on hacks and add ons in current EQ, show EQ, and MQ are pretty standard and accepted. Whenever there is open world contestants items, then there will be people cheating. How do you aim to combat that? Um, that's more of an Ollie question. I could say from just the standpoint of how do we want to combat that? Um, initially, until we just decide, oh man, it's not working, we're overwhelmed, we give up. Uh, we would like to, we would like to combat behavior that we find is not in keeping with the spirit of the game, the community, or our TOS um, in an aggressive manner. In my, in my career, I've, I've pretty much only worked on either live MMOs or a couple in development. Um, and we've always been you know, fairly okay with banning people. And I think that's, that's gotta be the case. Um, and I think if, if part of what we do is establish like a true community again, um, then, then it makes it so that it's still going to be a job. It's still going to need, um, you know, there will be definite technical considerations and, um, you know, things that we're doing to help mitigate those problems. But uh, if we build a traditional old school community, then there's going to be plenty of tattletales and all sorts of other shit going on. Though, we'll also be dealing aggressively with people that are overly tattletale. Like that person that's always petitioning everybody. I swear he's a bot. Just, Timmy, stop petitioning or we're going to give you a timeout. Are referring to the official don't be a D posse, sir. Yeah. Yeah, just be cool, man. There's another way to say it. Just be cool. Respect the community. Flood alerts. That's no good, Liz. That is some far render distance. Yeah, um, in different zones, we're going to have like really gnarly render distance. Um, and then other zones, you won't be able to see. 10 feet in front of your face. So it's going to depend on the zone. Tiggle said no specifics needed, but are you aiming for an automated approach, anti-cheat? 
or a personal base approach GM team. I think we're going to try to, I think I already hit this, but yeah, just to reiterate. Um, the, we'll automate as much as possible. Um, we'll also automate uh, flagging and in, in data for GMs to use as much as possible. And then a lot of it's just gonna be um, ensuring that we've got server sheriffs in place who really know you know, know the community as much as possible. All right, so I, I feel like I would have already hit the zone line by now, but maybe not. Hmm. <clears throat> I actually really wonder what Ollie's or your opinion is on band waves. All right, stop. So eight minutes and 30 seconds. Um, that is how long it takes to traverse this zone without any movement speed modifiers. Whoa, hello. Hi there. Um, Ripto said, look at that spider. Yeah. We we have a new spider in an animated. Um and so it looks like Nick's added them to a few of the zones. Saren said I took the day off to play phase two of uh Well saw today my computer office room is just dark cave at the moment. I mean, sometimes it's nice and cozy. Seasons of discovery. Well, I'm in here. I might as well, might as well get a rough time on traversal across here as well, just to keep it in mind since we're doing some reorganizing of some zones and stuff, some redesigns going on. Defiant Possum, would you say? I can think of a better reference. Circle time? Uh, it is a good reference. I was just picking on you. Um, Tiggles was asking about sheriffs because it's guaranteed they will know him by name. Is it is it Vikinos or uh, Vikinos? I'm assuming Vikinos. Good to know. We'll make sure. We'll make sure the list is started. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that happens. I mean, I've, I've been a GM, you know, I've been a GM in, a, in EQ and it's, it's one of those things where it's funny because... <sighs> I won't even say it's a love hate thing. It is. It's just kind of a. It's a interesting, like. I dealt, you know, um, on the different servers I was on, I dealt with different folks, and it, it, they're kind of a lot of the pain in the ass guild leaders. They're still fun, man. It's not like it's not a. We know it's not a malicious thing, you know. So it's. It, they're, sometimes they're kind of anti-heroes in a sense. Um, <clears throat> so it's kind of fun to have those rascals. I mean, when I was uh, GM on Talon Zek, Pandemonium was always starting shit, but they were fun. They kept it interesting for me. Um, that said, at the end of the day, the GM the GM is the is the boss of that server. Um. So, you know, when people get a little, they're, they're, they get a little big in the britches, I'm like, well, I'm the, I'm the guild leader of the biggest server on our biggest guild on this server. It's like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> like I'll ban you. Um, 
I was I was a GM on Talonzek for a bit. Uh, I forget what in, I think. In a rook, or did I start? I oh I started on Seventh Hammer. I was GM of Seventh Hammer, but then in order to play with um, the guild of one of my uh, my buddies at work at SOE, um, who he was in the big guild on seventh hammer and he was like you got to transfer over here and play with us and raid with us um and then i was like okay so i couldn't be naturally gm there anymore so i moved to talon zek um and that was fun and then um sulan zek was something that a few of us that had been gms on pvp servers and also enjoyed pvp um like was the suggestion that we made because the way I ran Talon Zek was very hands off. I was like, most of the time when people were petitioning, like, oh, so and so is training me. I'm like, all right, we'll train them back, kill them. You know, like, uh, are you able to target their monk? Okay. Can you kill the monk before it gets there with all of the monsters? Okay. Well, then try that. Stop bothering me. Um, but then I played on uh, Sulon for a bit. I still have a screenshot. I I took a screenshot of my old, my gnome on uh, SC. Yep, Talonzek was PvP. It was uh, teams, team PvP. Um, so let me scroll back up. Uh, so Goblin, my opinion on band waves is... I mean, it's it's better if it's not just it builds up and builds up and builds up unless you're doing a specific thing. Odds are you're we're better off if we're handling bands as we go. Um, but usually, uh, if some if we get a new system or technology or logging or whatever, then sure it makes sense to run a band wave. Um, I. The game that I worked on in the first when I first moved to Germany, I think I told the story of we we're having a lot of problems with botting, um, and we came up with a fun trick to because they were, they were packet sniffing and then using that to bot, um, and uh, so I had the had the programmers basically put invisible because they're botting to go around loot these little uh, boxes of from wreckage. It was a space game, so you could go around pick up loot from wreckage. It was a bad design, but it w had been in there forever. Um, so we just put in invisible boxes. There's no visual representation for them, but the packets were indicating that there are boxes there. And so then we could get the bots to basically pick up packets that nobody else could see. So we had a fairly high degree of certainty that the only people collecting those little honey pots were bots. And then we uh, gathered them up and and did a nice band wave. So, <clears throat> and we we I mean all of the good botting like software that was available. I mean we purchased as well so that we could deconstruct it and. Um, sit in their forums and stuff. So we would watch, we would watch any band waves from the inside and kind of see what was going on. Um, let's see. Now the the problem was that the CEO got, even though he said he was cool with it, um, the CEO got a little bummed when we. You know, when you lose twenty or thirty thousand accounts to a bandwave, and then that hits, you know, that hits your MAU or whatever. I don't. I don't remember that too. We don't, there won't be a lockjaw in our game, Etris, but he may have a cousin. So we, Opeth, we want to, we want to go live with at least one PVP server, but we haven't locked in on what the rule set should be. Do you guys have opinions on 
PvP rule set. Hard to kill a monk when he's when they're on the same team as you with uh, cleric box healing rezzing them. That's fair, Tiggles. But that's also Discord server, Discord server contacts and EQ is a hardcore short term PvP server in EQ with a contest to be the highest level by the end of the time period. If you died, your character got deleted. Story goes that they used it as a honeypot to observe cheating because they knew every cheater would try to observe and try it, to try and win an item named after them. Ooh, that that reminds me of a good point. And yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, the thing that I, I always fail to mention about the first game that I worked on in Germany, that weird PvP game, there was a 10,000 euro tournament every month. So the number of cheaters that we had in that game, I always forget this, that little detail is actually a mass, has massive implications as to why there is such gnarly cheating and hack attempts and everything. Uh, um, on that game and in our company. It was a 10,000 euro a month tournament where they would have a basically just a one, one V one tournament in the tournament system that the game had. If you want opinions and discussion, I'm more than happy to be at that table. Regarding PvP? My personal opinion, after playing EQMU PvP servers for a decade, team servers best with a decent punishment for death. Um, so how do you guys feel about cross-teaming, though, in that scenario? I'll open the link and keep it for after, after the stream. Thank you, Tiggles. Hardcore, no cross-teaming. Make it like Sulan. Man, there are weird moments like this where I, I just think our game's so pretty. I don't know if it's, I, I, it's got to be just a, a fair amount of bias. Because this is like completely undeveloped. This is just placeholder geo and shit. It's just simple but pretty. It just, to me, it always, it feels, this is going to be the weirdest description, but it always feels kind of creamy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's it's kind of a little buttery. Uh. This is a haul. This is a long haul without, oh, but we're going to, we're going to run back with, uh, we're going to run back with move speed buff and see where is my guy? That's my guy. That's my boy. Um, where am I? F. Don't hit the zone line. We'll just call it here. We'll call it here. Stop running. Don't hit the zone line. All right. Stop. F eleven. Cool. Now let's run back with move speed buff. <coughs> I 
I just need to find someone that looks at me like Sean looks at Butter. Are you trying to shame me? Um, Tiggle said, let me get running while we do this. Tiggle said, uh, PVP is really hard to make good. People really don't want to PVP. They just want to beat people. And when they can't, they just quit. If you have item loot, then, uh, you have people who only log in when they know they will win and become ultra risk averse. It discourages PVP. Don't know how to fix that. I liked the tag system in on Sulan, if I remember correctly. Um. Zukin said, Goblin would be cool if it was fluid and players could use some diplomacy features to set who they wanted as ally or enemy. Oh, that would be interesting. Uh, do you... Uh, Ah, oh, okay, he's continuing. Zukin says, like, maybe it starts off as evil races against good races, but they could agree to become allies with a particular race if they wanted. That might be interesting. Uh, Goblin's response. I mentioned something like that to Sean about high-level players having influence at, like, a high table or something to choose alignments, diplomacy. Would enjoy diplomacy stuff. Well, if we if it was just open PV, if it was open PVP, it would just be chaos, I guess. Um, hmm. Because I was gonna say if it's like, you know, essentially guilds would kind of do that, right? But. Um, Opeth says cross teaming is an issue with low population. If you have the population bandwidth to even just. Uh, minorly moderate a three team server can usually take care of itself is that a hundred percent true though I mean in the case of like pandemonium I thought they cross teamed because they knew there was a tactical advantage to it That being said, I think FFA server is the best way to take care of itself. It just doesn't let the casual players find a home easily. What if you could only be killed once a 12 or 24 hour period unless you engage in PvP? Um, then you become flagged to be killed again. Uh, then you would you would probably wind up being like fancy. Fancy the bard, right? Go, go, good team. It would be cool to, it would, it would actually be cool to be able to do something a little more complex on the, uh, I don't know. I think the stuff that I think the stuff that Zukin and Goblin are talking about is worth exploring. Like tap into a little bit of a little bit of like what AOC is hinting at, but just keep a, a bit simpler. And since we're not trying to do a complete like dynamic world with node system and all that stuff, we might be able to pull something off there. Zinfar says maybe it could be like Star Wars Galaxies had it sign up um, to a faction that's at war with another one have timed events for people to fight over a city castle or something maybe but I think the challenge with making it too structured is just the thing that I, I did like and again I'm not saying this is somebody that was like expertly experienced 
um, on these servers. But the thing I did like about EQ's kind of janky PvP was that it was there was a lot of just kind of emergence there, much like the rest of the game, due to it being so simple and janky. I think WoW was originally going to have three factions, so if one started going crazy, two would team up on the big guy, Goblin says. Tiggles says, I think faction-based system would be nice. Even player-created faction, something you can view at a glance. If uh, you con a player and they have murdered Dark Elves, you're a Dark Elf, and they murdered a guildmate last week, and they killed people in high keep, assuming you're high keep, then you can clock them as an aggressive person with a quick glance. I think being able to defend NPC factions with PvP with a reward would be nice. Always remember getting ally faction with Claws of Isha and hunting people, West Waste, um, or Max faction with Chardock. So we've already got uh, the concept of monster cities going in. We're working on that right now in Telekir. So I think that will actually work a lot more naturally in uh, on, a PV on the PvP server. Um, because you can already build up your faction with the Ashira in this case, and then get to use their merchants and bank and things like that. So I could I could definitely see people being a pain in the ass in a zone like that um, on a PvP server. You should definitely avoid situations where you're constantly losing massive progress due to PvP. I mean, it's one of the challenges with PvP in a game that does have a death penalty, right? Uh, you should be able to get a sheer faction if you kill a player who has low a sheer faction uh, but don't, don't you think that would lead to people using um, using players uh, to farm faction it's hard it's hard providing any type of reward like that um, without it being exploited potentially exploited All right, stop. So like seven minutes, 30 seconds. Now I think it would be easy to add a 12 hour cooldown per player. But again, then we start layering in rules where it's like, is it really does it provide that much value? I mean, if I'm aligned with the Ashira and some players are coming in there and I'm, I'm killing them. I think just the joy of killing them is almost enough of a reward. Think dropping uh, some or all your money, but uh, your gear and not your gear uh, would be good PvP. Yeah, dropping gear, I mean, I. and then all of a sudden it's like, do you, do you not drop no drop gear and then are people bagging gear as they go and it's just it gets goofy and then naked casters are kind of the the meta and all that so yeah it's like gear i don't think gear will be part of the rule set for us whoops whoops let me let me recast so i don't lose my buff i don't think i will lose my buff but I also I like the I like the the um like the the Sulanzek 
kind of tab system, right? Again, in that case, it is one of those things. I, I do think the tabs had a cooldown on them, right? So that you couldn't farm. But then again, even without rewards, I don't know. There's just something rugged and and there's something if you take let's ignore the fact that I just said no item loot, but there is something about playing a Ixar on Ralos that felt right to me. Like I played a Ixar Necromancer on Ralos and I remember going down the field of bone and constantly just looking at everybody else like, are you assholes going to kill me? You know what I mean? Like it was just always, you were always on. All right, so let's uh, reset and run. Man, that just, that made me think about like, uh, there's just something in, there was something during that period like playing that was in my spirit that's, that, you know, felt, it just felt different. I don't know if that could ever be recaptured. PvP is its own reward while PvP was ruined with the addition of the honor system. I, I've, uh, were you guys just, I think you were just talking about that in Discord, weren't you? I, I can get on board with that. I could get on board with that for sure. I think that's a fair argument. Nicodemus, I'm not sure what problem that would be solving. He says, thinking, what if upon character death, instead of incurring a death experience penalty, you give a player a choice to play as a monster for a set amount of time, keep the XP, hope the world feel more surreal in the process. I don't, yeah, I don't know that it's a, it's a fair trade. And I think when we when we explore like play as a monster type things we've got to watch because it can be it you know it's going to be very disruptive Tigo said, I was uh, in a high-end guild on SZ and the main motivating factor for the best PvP was always secure zone for PvE kill. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Yeah, Defiant Possum, that's that's a challenge. That type of system is exploitable. Then you have to layer on... Um, then you have to layer on additional rules and it just starts to feel a little... Tickle said... <laughs> Only watch this stream to take uh, down notes for launch. Yeah, good luck with that. Hate to waste your time, buddy.
Had a freaking blast trying to figure out the SK, SK quests on my own in beta. Oh. What game? Not our game, right? What game are you talking about? Goblin says, let lore dictate teams as like soft rules and maybe emerging, emerging guilds would be the way to go. PvP will just happen with all the drama backstabbing that comes along with it. I think, I mean, it would, there's no harm in us doing some little brainstorming on some sort of diplomacy style, faction-y ideas if uh, Zukin's got stuff in mind. At launch, Sean announces that what he's been showing us isn't even the game and no one knows any zones. Hmm. You think we would do that? No, we wouldn't do that. A new conspiracy theory emerges. Our streams are only showing you stuff that we want you to see. Hmm. Sparrow says, I thought Vanguard's diplomacy was really fun and engaging. I, th I thought that was really, really cool. I don't know a ton about it, and I don't even think I used it at the time, but the notion of it is pretty cool. And it would be a really fun thing to be able to do. Something along those lines. Like... And, and have those additional options for people that want to play different in different in different ways. Says there are only three viewers. I guess I'm hallucinating in this chat. It's true. This this chat is on drugs. Eminem should announce it's dropping the Parently style and opting for a realistic and gritty art style. That's funny. Alright, so I've got those times down. Cool. I'll add that to our understanding. Um... PvP and Shadowbane was the same way. We had to protect our rune spawns in our territory. If you allowed other nations or guilds to get that PvE loot, uh, they could gain power and declare war on you. Can we dismember, execute people slash NPCs? Um, not yet, but maybe in the future. Yeah, so there's... I'm curious, so Goblin and Simon and Zukin's in here. Um, Nicodemus is in here. Bullet, you're too new to the team, I think, for this to to hit yet. Um, and it's a I mean, well, you know what? It's a general concern with the streams, period. But one of the things that would be a bummer, and I'm curious for the folks that have been working on Eminem so far. How's it feel? How's it feel to spend so much time looking behind the scenes? Because one of the biggest one of the biggest downsides to working on a game is the fact that we will never, ever, ever. Well, I won't say that. It is highly unlikely for most of us working on the game that we will feel that same feeling of like 
that sense of mystery and place and just enjoyment that the rest of you have the potential to feel, which is a, it's a bummer. It really is a bummer. Now it can happen on a team where the team gets big enough or we're siloed enough that we're just kind of like heads down working on certain shit and we don't see the other stuff that's going on. Um, even then it's a little, you know, it's a, it's a little, little iffy. And that's why when people ask me like, what was my favorite period of like, what was the favorite thing I worked on, on EQ? I'll often mention you know, despite being proud of some of the other exp uh, expansions, working on Shadows of Luckman was probably the raddest period of time because <clears throat> I was working on it as a player, basically. And so much of the game was still a mystery because I hadn't seen behind the curtains yet, but I was also already getting to develop new content. And so... That feeling of finding a giant water snake that you weren't sure of, yeah, that kind of thing's cool. But still, that's that's like a that's an incident. That's a moment where it's like, oh wow, cool, all right, um, that shocked me. But that overall sense of like being in the world, the world is as we define it. It's not, and every once in a while, when I think back to like. When I think back to playing EQ or maybe a little bit when I first started playing WoW. Um, but by then I started also to get a little bit of that, that developer jadedness um, was already there. So when I first, when I was playing EQ though, man, this was, it was a, it was a place I could go. It, it really felt like a place. It was, and it just, it retained mystery, like it had mysteries and it just, when I went into EQ, I was really leaving the real world and going into this place. And it just, and it just created like this childlike sense of wonder in me that is really hard to, you know, uh, get it again and it's a bummer because i also feel like there's there's a lot of value in feeling that when working on a game right like you want to instill that in a game um but but it, it requires some like tapping into the game even says kind of like going from a player to dungeon master in D D. once you start running games you're not happy just being a player Oh, I don't know. It's interesting you mention that because I kind of feel I like I like being able to be a player. Desikar says, as a developer and InfoSec practitioner, I cannot turn off systems. Disassembly in my head. Magic is almost immediately dispelled, and watching this is more magical to me. Well, it's nice. I mean, I'm hoping that we can do it for some folks. Bullet says, this is 100% true for me when I was running a GTA server. I knew everything. There was no secrets. When I played and saw something, I wanted to fix it. It would... Uh, would have been nice to not know so much. Yeah. Yeah, and so to Redeker's point, um, which is a reassuring point, we'll see. We'll see how much you guys uh, sort of follow through with this when we go live. But the point of, I mean, uh, so Redeker says, I mean, most of the people on P99 saw that same stuff in EQ Live. There's no wonder anymore. It's still fun and enjoyable. Um. But you're still you're still going back to Disneyland. You're not, and and you still haven't really spent a lot of time looking at the animatronics without the skin on. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a nice point. Defiant Possum says, but that's how art works. You make something beautiful and let others enjoy it. It's true. We're doing this for you guys. Mm. 
Right on, Nicodemus. Yeah, keeps wanting to wanting to make the moments and also and also feel them. Uh, but it, it goes beyond that because like even right here, like right now, running around. Don't get me wrong, when I'm playing our our game, I I get into it, you know. Um and there's there can still be moments of surprise. Like I don't know what items Nick's put on these guys, right? So if we get an item, that'll be cool. Um And you know how bad my memory is on a lot of this shit. Like I could have I could have populated this and I'll probably forget what's in it. Um but it's about it's about tapping into there's like an overall overall feel that happens as well. It's not just about the moments, it's about like just this entering a magic place. And I, I've got the feeling that it, it's got to feel different for you guys than it does for many of us. Simon said, during our last playtest, I was definitely immersed in our world. I'm usually so focused on one zone, I explore the rest of the game. Yeah, so I think you get, you get a little bit of a benefit from that. Um, I think the magic leaves quickly when someone with more information than you uses uh, it to beat you to a camper boss or level to arm race to be most efficient. Mm. I think that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother aspect of it. Goblin says, did not mess with my experience with the play test, a lot of the world is still fresh. Might just be where I am on the team, but the game developed developed me completely, especially with all of the goblins, gnomes, dwarves, etc. Or sorry, ogres, etc. Interact with. Still have those wow moments internally when I see a zone for the first time. Yeah, don't and don't get me wrong. Like I said, I think even for me, there there's constantly moments where I'm like, oh man, look how cool this is, or um. Or I just kind of fall into the game or, or whatever. Um, but I also know how much there is to the game, how much there isn't to the game, what we'd like to add to the game, all of that stuff. Sorry, Bird to ask, are you saying that the feel is still needing fine tuning for you or did I misunderstand? No, it's, it's not about that. It's more of just about... Um, it's more about the overall just sort of sense of immersion and wonder, which I think uh, comes in large part from not fully, fully understanding all of the boundaries. But to the earlier point of even then, once you learn the boundaries, it's still maybe by then it feels like your world. So it's not as big a deal that you know all the quests and all the spots or whatever. What is your opinion on voxels? Have you thought about making this game more like Minecraft? Nick said Evercraft Online that has that covered. Yeah, if you're not aware of it, here. Oops. Um, check out this project. Evercraft Online. Excuse me. Uh, it is made by an awesome team. And it's a really, really good project. Um, if my internet can stop being garbage and the website will load. We've got a, we've got a couple of VODs up on our channel as well.
Man, I don't know what's going on there. Is that me or them? My bitrate seems fine. Hmm. Anyway, super cute. Exactly what you uh, are probably picturing. We've uh, we've played for a few hours in the past in a couple different sessions, and uh, it was it was just a lot of fun. Uh, what is your opinion on gambling mechanics? My kids love gambling with in-game money. Um, in-game with in-game money. Why not? If we can, if we can get some real like real live uh, gambling games in as well, that'll help your kids become better gamblers in the future. So I think it's good because then we'd be entertaining and educational. Be a lot of new magic for you to create as a Lord British Eridun type figure. Even if you won't get the same mystery others will out of Eminem. I'm actually, I'm really hoping that our team... I don't, I don't know that it's good to have a, a single figure like that. I think um, what would be really cool is for our team to, because of the way that we're developing it and just kind of how we operate and who our team is... It would be nice if if the community knows the team, not just a dude. And if um, it would be cool if the the game is always associated with a team. You know what I mean? And I mainly say that so that then later when everybody gets pissed off about whatever, then um, I could just be like. Go complain at the team, not me. Vikinos, thank you for the follow. Let me get the time on another thing really quick. Blame Nick. <laughs> yeah. Blame Nick. Hashtag. Hashtag blame Nick. Let's get it. Let's go ahead and get it started. Let's make sure that everybody's on board. It'll be it'll be nice for everybody to know where to appropriately place blame for different things. And then quickly realize that the team's got each other's back. So when some bullshit like a Fire Nick campaign starts, be like, what? All of you timed out. 24 hour timeout, straight to jail. Wait, I was told it was Blame Goblin. That too. Can we make fishing? Uh, sure, fishing is really in depth in this game. Like, I want a system. Um, I want to join forums just about fishing. Um, that's an Ollie. That'll be an Ollie thing. If we've got the time, though, I, I, I think we would love to make everything more elaborate over time. Rather than put in, rather than put in a bunch of new wacky systems um, just to sell an expansion, what if we just keep reinvesting in making the existing systems more interesting and um, deep? And then you just got to replay. That's the thing. We can keep, we can come back and keep adding depth to the existing existing game instead of gi giving you just random shit you don't care about, um, and making the game sort of like this weird pile of insurmountable. How do like where do I fucking even start as a newbie? Um, you know, all of a sudden you've got forty two currencies and you got to like. You got your. You got to raise Tamagotchis in order to battle between garrisons in order to get your new mount or whatever. Um, like, 
we, we can just reinvest in making the game cooler, giving you more options for stuff, blah, 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 if you guys will agree that you're willing to replay the game. But you're gonna have to sign a, you're gonna have to sign a form up front saying that you will make alts. You will not just like min max the shit out of the game until there's no enjoyment and then complain that there's nothing to do. Can we get you to do that? We'll have a subset of a subset of a subset of a player base. Hey, you know what? 50 subscribers. That's still cash. What would that, what would that come out to? I don't know if we projected quite that low. Let's do some quick math. I mean, you know, that would almost cover a cost of something. Let's see. Nothing worse than finished or uh, than unfinished or abandoned content. Grow your current content. Yeah. MCP said, I think Goblin is responsible for Nick, to be honest. Have you ever seen the two of them in the same place? No. Do you, do you even know if Goblin's real? Oh wait, and that was with, that was with speed on. So let's kill that and do that one more time. Nick during the day, Goblin at night. Yeah, well, again. Mortis, has he ever said that on stream? Because if he has, I'm definitely going to tell HR. It's funny, every once in a while I'll see like notifications on my Slack. And I, I have to, I have to check notifications on Slack. Just in case it's somebody on the team telling me I just did something horrifically bad. I have oh the uh, the biome video, Nick. I haven't yet. And there's another video I want to watch on stream as well. I was just doing this timing thing and kind of get caught up in it until people showed up for the day.
You better Google that word. Ask me some shit. <laughs> on stream, trying to call me out on my lack of English vocabulary. Jasmine's always asking me what words are. I'm giving her the worst. <laughs> She's like, uh, her, per, her poor vo vocabulary. I'm giving her the worst definitions half the time. What does this word mean? I just make shit up. It's like dealing with a 10 year old. Not, I guess that's kind of old, a four year old. Dad, what is this word? To the other side of town, lady. Uh, can you stop by the Druid Guild and finish my quest? I can do that for you. Please just send the cash to Nick's account. Hey, Robert. What's going on? Robert's here. All right, we can watch the video in a second since since Robert's here. Fulor, what's up? Have you seen the has you seen the recent updates, Fulor? You got to look at I can't wait for us to get the new shader stuff in. Tonight, Harvard's going to be so good. All right. We're going to pause this. We're going to switch accounts to Eminem account so that when the video is over and it shows recommendations, you guys don't lose your shit and go, what kind of, why are you getting those kind of recommendations? That's crazy. Um, any plans to tune down the sun a bit? It might just be my eyes, but it seems a bit blinding on some surfaces. Um, it may be the, it may be the surfaces more than the sun, but We'll see as we're continuing to get all the shaders in, um, shaders adjusted and work through the various materials and then look at lighting. Cause you may, poop maker, you may have, uh, you may have a point. Robert ate kebab today, feel amazing. Right on dude. Poop maker, I'm, I think I'm confusing you with one of the many other poops that we have in here from time to time. We've got a we've got a pretty poop heavy chat. I was in here a long time ago. I pop in uh every now and then. I read that as I poop in. <laughs> I swear I did. I'm not even joking. I'm not trying to be funny. I read it as I poop in. Uh 100% pooping. It wasn't just me, right? <laughs> so what you're saying, poop maker, is you're not very regular. Eh? Fuck, why do I do this? Why am I streaming? I could just be having an enjoyable Friday night instead of being a dipshit on the internet forever because I'll upload the VOD and then it'll just be around forever. And later on when the game's live... Some idiot's going to be like, I went back and found a VOD from the 9th of February where he was making poop jokes, and now, and now, he's wasting my time with a stupid decision that we all said they should not have done. Is poop funny now, Mr. Lord? Yeah, it's still funny. It's always going to be funny. It's a slap on my ass. I mean, on my face. You know what I also think is funny is I'm an industry, I'm an industry professional. I, no matter what you may think about me, um, you cannot deny the fact that I am a professional game developer. It says so on my resume. 
and I get out here. I don't, I don't even look at the viewer count, right? Like I've got a, a dash mark there. I don't look at a viewer count, let alone who's in the viewership. Now there's probably a solid 30 of you talking regularly on here. I can look at the metrics later, but there's a, there's, you know, there's a, there's a subset of the overall viewers that are talking excuse me and that means the other a solid 30 little shits exactly temporis so okay nick Dima said there's 90 now so that means there's 60 other people in here it could be anybody it could be it could be anybody from the industry it could be elon musk who's at some point just going to give us the bag of cash that we need to do this thing upright it could be anybody out there watching this and I just don't give a shit, right? Like, if you guys are having a good time, if you like the game, if I'm not being offensive. The only people I actually care about opinions are the people who uh, who are working on the game, and then all of you that are coming back day to day, week to week, month to month, whatever. And you're like, you know what? I don't care if you say dumb things. We're loving the game so far. We want to check it out. That's it. <clears throat> All right, so let's watch let's watch our video. That's not it. Videos. I did, Redeker. I did watch that AI NPC chat video. The uh, the person that posted, I wound up looking into uh, some of the other stuff that they're doing. It's uh, it's interesting, but I I think all of my all of my questions um, all of my questions that I had for you when you showed it still stand. Hey, Ollie, what's up? Do you walk into some serious talk now? I was just talking about how unserious this stream is and but that how that's got to be okay. No, Nicodemus, it's I, I, when I look at the metrics afterwards, it's usually about like 100 people, which is it's fine. We were talking about poop a fair amount before you got here, Ali. Ali loves talking about poop as well. Anyways, so I'm going to shut up. I'm gonna crank up the volume, but I'll keep an eye on it. I'm gonna crank up the volume a bit and we're gonna watch the biome video. Has anybody not seen the, vi the biome video that we posted? D Loves Pudding says, hey, name a game developer who has literally lost a finger developing a game for you. In all fairness, that had nothing to do with the game. And had nothing to do with the game. All right, so only one of you haven't seen the video yet. We'll still watch it because it's awesome. Two of you, okay. All right, let's let's check the sound level. It's probably going to be a little loud. So if it's too loud, just start screaming in chat, and I'll turn it down a little bit. Okay, guys. But be prepared, just in case it's too loud. Did I find a finger? Yeah, well, it's still on until the end of the month. Then it gets chopped off. No, it's not loading. I have pause. I, I, it's paused. It's paused, Ollie. It's just paused. Um, let me see. Because I'm trying to get all this stuff out of the way.
All right. Hey, Esan, what's up, buddy? All right, we're going to watch the video. We're going to watch the video now. Let's check the sound levels. I'll immediately adjust if it's too loud, but it may be loud. Oops.
Oh, hey. Yeah, jump scare. Sorry about that. Sorry. I'm just reading chat right now. Sorry about that. Low visibility, but making PC eyes glow like polar bears and wolves, so you can see them from afar. Well, we've got the we've got the eye glow technology. Uh, you know, what biome we missed though. Spider dungeon first made. We're that's gonna. That, I, you know what? I've actually been trying to hold off showing. I I, I glimpsed in the the front of it recently in a stream last week but i don't want to i don't want to show it off too much i think that one's a better one for people just to experience excuse me um yeah so keep in mind the the biomes that we've got in included in here are just the ones that members of the team wanted to do so Bilth um, hopped on this um, forest biome. Uh, the the first area. Let's go back. This first area was um, once we get past it. So this first area here was done by Monty. Um, using essentially a new a new approach to how we would build out terrain meshes and um, and then uh, reduce them down to a like a, a poly style that matches what we're shooting for and the um, a lot of what he was doing in here was kind of like a, a tech pipeline thing right like a tech art pipeline sort of set up um, and then I don't think I could have sworn there's some pieces that we haven't seen maybe I didn't show well in the video so keep in mind um, I just went in I if Bilt had not made the like had, if Bilt hadn't already created a whole bunch of clips for um this forest zone then honestly i don't know that we would have made the video unfortunately but that's kind of how stuff works sometimes hey darton what's going on um it was just one of those awesome coming together moments where because bilth was went ahead and made these clips um then i really i kind of felt obligated for us to make a video and i'll be honest i like editing videos like I, I i like getting into premiere and cobbling shit together and trying to find cool transitions and stuff um and so i mean i've enjoyed video editing since like high school um not that i've done a shitload of it but um over the years i've i've, I've done a bit so it's nice to get in it's i, I find it relaxing and creative but we had to then go in and like I went in and filmed the the rest of these shots and it just kind of was like all right let's see if we can do this in a reasonable amount of time um, but honestly if if Bill hadn't started the process then we wouldn't have this badass video and we wouldn't have this great music and then you wouldn't have seen all the wonderful work that folks have done so I'm glad that it happened um, there's some, I think there's some stuff, all of that comes back to, I might not have shown some of the, you know, there may be certain things in some of the zones that I didn't show. So I apologize if that's the case um, for some of the environment folks, but um, this one was, was Monty's, right? Like this was very much him coming in. Uh, also, you notice the blending and stuff that he's doing here. So that was, that was what he was looking at here. Um, and then the next zone is uh, Simon's. So Simon is in chat. And he put this to, together and I don't, I can't remember if, Simon, if you're here, did you do all of the props or did 
Bill help you with some of those props as well. And I remember Goblin was concepting some stuff as well. And I don't know. Um, I thought that Simon did all of the little viney things and, and things like that, but um, I'd be curious. Let's see. Robert said, I'm making a video of my Pro Tools session of the Biome Jam soundtrack. Going to upload it in a bit. Oh, badass. That's super cool. Um, Mentali said, saw the Biome footage this morning. Things have been good, uh, but they're getting so good. And so one of the notes that Simon had mentioned in a previous video was, uh, you, can see, you can see some stuff where uh, given given additional time to really work on it and get it beyond the like 80% good, 70% good, depending on the thing, um, stage, then you'll see even more detail and some cleanup in areas and stuff like that. So, so yeah, Simon, Simon picked the swamp and went with it or the jungle and went with it. Then, like I said, um, I think even in the previous update, you had seen some of the assets being worked on by Bilth. And there is a, there are a number of additional cool areas in this zone that I wanted to show off. Um, but again, just for sort of brevity's sake and, and uh, try to mix it up a little bit so you could see some of both with all of the biomes, I was trying to get a little bit of day and night so you could see a, a bit of the the differences there because it, you can really tell the difference, you know, with the the way that the fog works and stuff during the day. It actually feels foggier during the day than it does at night. But there's some there's some great little areas where you can go under through the rocks and stuff like that as well in this zone. So again, not everything's covered. These zones weren't like level designed. They they really were um, the artists for the most part, like taking a base base mesh that we had for the terrain and going in and, and just seeing, even with limited sculpting or modification of the base terrain, how different can we make them feel? The um, the snow and ash, and I didn't, you don't really see it in here as much, so it may be an issue on my end, but I could have sworn when I was in this zone before, and you don't really see it in the video, that you also see sparks kind of coming down, and I don't know that we see any in here. Oh, I will say that, um, I will say that I went out of my way to make sure that this freaking ash flake went by the camera and the the part that really kind of sucked was you could you could see more of the the lava river going by it, more of the river was in frame and then i realized i was moving my mouse around and you could see the damn mouse at the bottom of the frame and so i was like oh man shit oh i don't want to show the mouse i had to i'd had to do some wacky edits here and there to get rid of my my mouse or in first person if you're moving um your, your arm like your arm will clip in front of the camera every once in a while and so there was some cutting of that stuff out um and uh right here the freaking cursor was right at the bottom of the scene and uh and so what i did though was like i i realized because i was like i'm getting this ash in I'm having this ash come down in front of the camera. No matter what happens, I'm going to have this ash come by the camera because it looks badass. And so I just zoomed in in Premiere. I just zoomed in to where it is there. So somewhere way down here is me screwing off with the with the cursor. But I was just like, dude, the ash. It's so important. Ah, oh, the ash. Yeah, it's the little things that makes life pleasurable for me guys but yeah I don't see any of the sparks 
Need to get a camera illusion with no arms. I could have made myself invisible, I guess. I just didn't think about that. Dude, Robert's music is so good. That, that, that feeling's almost got like a Tales from the Dark Side transition. That ash. That ash, though. <laughs> Listen. Tells from Dark Side still Pcore. I still get goosebumps when I hear that song. The the Tales from the Dark Side intro. Ugh. Makes me afraid of the dark. And dude, this snow. So Pattis did the lava and Pattis did the snow. And these snow scenes. Oh my god. I enjoyed just staring at this in the editor so much. Like Putting this together was so much fun just because it's so like, oh, it's so cozy. It's so. Like right here. Oh man. When it's coming at you. You could say Pattis runs either hot or cold, no in between. <laughs> so yeah, guys. Uh, really, 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 really appreciate all the kind comments and stuff. Um, the response to the video has been super good and we we posted a link in our slack and was just like oh check out the comments because people are being so rad about it so um the hopefully stuff like this even if we don't get the zones in you know what i mean like we want to build a world that feels uh sensible right like we want to build out the world in a way where you know, you you get to these biomes and stuff, and it makes sense that you're there. Um, and the so some of these biomes you may have to wait a little bit longer for than others. But I I do feel like exercises like this, um, hopefully inspire you guys to think ahead to what our world can be, and it will naturally push us to like I'm personally you know, in seeing this, like so motivated to see how much of the world we can build out so that we can get you into these things. And hopefully the team feels inspired like that as well. Um, and then it will, may also push us in some ways to be creative and how we present this to you, because the reality is like, Yeah, we'll we'll talk about it more soon, but we're a small team. Um, we move at a pretty good clip, but we can still only make so much game so fast. And we we really want to get you guys into game sooner rather than later. Um, and so, you know, it it may be a situation where eventually you guys are in and playing, but hopefully you're enjoying what's there and looking forward to the promise of what can come and it doesn't feel like a it doesn't feel like we're just promising and not delivering right like if if we could if we can if we can earn anything from you in this process like the process of developing the games the way we have is hopefully when we say hey, this is where we're at or this is what we're doing or whatever. Uh, we've earned a bit of your trust and excitement for our eventual delivery on those promises. Does that make sense? Or am I just fucking doing my usual rambly thing that I do at 10 p.m. on a Friday? Where's Justin Beard at? Haven't seen him in chat yet. That's a, that is a good question. We'll have to check Discord, make sure he's okay. Clearly the test revealed a lot of efficiencies, um, but did it also reveal any holes or inefficiencies in our workflows? Interesting question. Um, I, 
I don't know that it, I think it, it pointed to some efficiencies that we could leverage that we haven't to date. So I guess that's a more, that's a roundabout way of saying that there are inefficiencies in our workflows for sure. Um, and so the, um, the, some of the stuff that we're going to be focusing on more on as we move forward, it's one of the reasons why we are happy to bring Nicodemus on the team. Um, so some of the things here, let me get some, let me get some background sound going again. So it's not just, it's not just me talking over. There we go. Um, so some of the stuff that we we learned, um, or just kind of it was hey, a reminder that we should we should um, do this is one of the reasons uh, why we we're happy to bring Nicodemus on the team was just doing a lot better planning in advance for the zone so that we're not just kind of throwing throwing a page full of text at the environment artists um, and you know some really rough maps and going all right figure it out from here um, but giving them a better better understanding of kind of how we want to lay things out and what our needs are and what the points of interest kind of are in terms of relative scale and all of that. Um, so it was, um, it was a good reminder of the fact that if we improve our workflow, we could, we could probably tackle these things, um, even faster than we have in the past in terms of zones. Um, I think it, it maybe is a good reminder of how, how quickly we can hit like a, you know, a solid 70, 80% mark, but then how much we need to kind of keep an eye on how, how much of an investment the last 15, 20, 30% can be right. And that's an area where there's always the potential risk of having the wheels spin a little bit, or even just not coming back and kind of wrapping it up to like, Hey, we we're at a 90% now, so let's just keep it there. But we need to like hit that. Um, so that's something that we're going to be looking at in the coming weeks and probably this next month. If I had to guess, um, we'll still be doing some planning and, and prep work and organizational work in preparation for changing our uh, workflow or pipelines a little bit um, going into March because um, it's already the 9th of February. So if I had to guess then March, what you'll probably be seeing is a fair bit of us going in and applying, um, applying the learnings that we've already had in, in the new, uh, sort of, uh, how would you even describe it? Like basically applying the new approach, um, that we've got for like the shaders and stuff. Uh, throughout the city. So one of the next things that we uh, that we want to do that we need to do in I would say is even you know, I think it's worth sort of keeping as a uh, before we even have another play test we should probably do which is basically get all of Night Harbor um up to date with what we've done with these other buildings and I'll go show, Oh geez, I'm so fast. I'll go show you really fast what I'm talking about. So we have the ability for everything to look like this now. And one of the things that we're talking about needing to do is essentially, it sounds like there's a little bit of like a export, make some tweaks, re-import, apply the shaders um, to, oh, let me go back to development mode, boom, um, to these structures. And so we're, we're gonna be doing the prep work that getting everything organized. Justin Beard, we were just talking about you. We 
were, were it was right there pessimistic squid a few messages up was asking if you were okay i was like we need to check discord see how justin's doing you good buddy But yeah, it'll be nice to basically get all of uh, Night Harbor using the new the new shader and having these like blended textures and stuff. So that'll be on the list. And then as we move forward, we'll be building with this understanding in mind. <clears throat> but I know this needs to this also needs to propagate out not just to um, Night Harbor, but it also needs to be in um, like Sungreet and other places. Not feeling good, have a bad cold, stressed out, but it's Friday. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Definitely take care of yourself. Don't. Uh... Yeah, don't don't wear yourself out. Take a nap. You can watch the VOD. You don't have to be in here. And then you can shoot me a DM if you're stressed out. Let me know if there's anything you need to get off your chest. I'll help you out. I'll be like, don't worry about it, buddy. But yeah, so I mean, this setup looks so good now that um, that we need to get it. We need to get it out. Um, other learnings. Um, I think other other learnings are just that we can we can definitely pull off um, fairly convincing biome so as we're looking at additional variety for release then uh that's not too scary right let me find that other video really quick um Greetings. There it is. All right. Hopefully this is cool. MMOocracy made a video the other day and I wanted to I wanted to hit on it. If that's cool. And I, I've been wanting to do this for, uh, since I saw the video, I was like, oh, you know, maybe it'd be fun to like check this, like respond to this video. Oh, I thought I already subbed, maybe it was on my other account. Okay. Cool. Turn this down. All right. So let's check this out and then we'll discuss it here. That's cool, right? I, I don't know. I don't know like the online etiquette, but I assume it's just like any other content creator. We watch their videos and we can respond. And then if you like it, then you should uh, hit his channel and sub. Hey, Aramisk. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Today we're going to talk about monsters and memories and specifically the mechanic of corpse runs. But before we get into the actual monsters and memories discussion, let me take you back down uh, memory lane here and let's talk about a situation that you've probably experienced in the past if you've played classic EverQuest. So uh, imagine with me now that you have just gotten off of work, 
you finished all your responsibilities, the kids are in bed, the wife's watching TV, and you sit down at the computer and you go, all right, it's time to do a little bit of grinding on my favorite game. So you log into EverQuest, you send some tells out to your best buds, your static group, your guild mates, and you guys get together and you head down into Lower Guck to get some experience and get some loot. And when you get down there, everything's going good. You guys are camping. Maybe you camp one of those mana stones that we talked about in the uh, the last MMO Talks episode. And the experience bar is moving. You're getting loot. Everybody's having a good time. And then all of a sudden, you wipe. Maybe it's a roamer that came through the camp at just the wrong time when the cleric didn't have enough mana. Maybe it was a critical lull resist that brought a bunch of extra enemies to, to your puller. Either way, your group wiped, and now you're all back at your bind point, and you don't have any of your items because your corpse is all the way down there at the bottom of Lower Guck. And it's uh, it's pretty risky because now you don't have any of your items. You could die again on your way down there. Well, let me tell you, Monsters and Memories is going to take this mechanic, and it's going to crank it up to 11. <laughs> the, the goblin corpse flopping right there. So first of all... um. I, I really like the example and I like the I like the video so far. Um, the goblin I missed it the first time. The, the goblin corpse flopping is beautiful. Uh, the the example he gives here I think is worth keeping in mind because I actually think it's uh, I actually think it's I think it's a good example. It actually sounds like a really it's it's kind of what makes the game. So I'm going to go back to it, but I feel like this is actually a really, to me, this is kind of the spirit of the game. Robert said that he passed that exact ogre's corpse inside lower Guck 30 minutes ago. Not kidding. Oh, that's awesome. P99 blue. And when you get down there, everything's going good. Everything's going camping. good. Maybe you camp one of those mana stones that we talked about in the uh, the last MMO Talks episode. And the experience bar is moving. You're getting loot. Everybody's having a good time. And then all of a sudden... The experience bar is moving. You're getting loot. Everybody's having a good time. Right? That sounds that sounds like a fun night. And the buildup was exactly right. Right? Like you're been like shit this week has been one it's friday i'm gonna get with the homies we're gonna go down there we're gonna camp oh my goodness this is gonna be great everything's going good and then you wipe maybe it's a roamer that came through the camp at just the wrong time when the cleric didn't have enough mana maybe it was a critical lull resist that brought a bunch of extra enemies to, to your puller Either way, your group wiped, and now you're... And so, it could have been just a roamer. It could have been a resist that happened at the wrong time. Somebody, the mana was just off at the moment, right? Like, oh, I thought we had this low on mana, wasn't paying attention, got too comfortable. All of that just sounds awesome. Because look at how simple of a game it is, and yet those things can happen, and you've got a group that's experienced, and all of a sudden shit goes sideways. So to me, that 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 is really indicative of the kind of emergent oh shit scenario that can come from a game that is still not necessarily highly mechanically complex. And you can't leash out of your mistake, yeah. Yeah, so so honestly, I thought it was a really, really cool example. Um, and I, I, I don't know if it was intended in that manner to be such a nice reflection of how the, how the game works or whatever. But anyway, so I just wanted to say that. You're all back at your bind point and you don't have any of your items because your corpse is all the way down there at the bottom of Lower Guck. And it's, uh, it's pretty risky because now you don't have any of your items. You could die again on your way down there. Well, let me tell you, Monsters and Memories is going to take this mechanic and it's going to crank it up to 11. So in Monsters and Memories, uh, not only do you leave all your items on your body, but your spells go in a spell book that also stays on your corpse. So when you pop back up at your bind point, unlike... I appreciate that it seems like it goes up to 11 because of that, but I don't, I don't know that it's... Uh... 
we'll take it. We'll take it. But I feel like we can still earn the 11 a bit. Yeah, EQ is at 10. Um, like in classic EQ, where you can go and you can memorize invis and you can memorize some buffs that help you get back to your body out of some spell book that inexplicably is, is still with you, even though the rest of your items are on your body, which is kind of weird. In Monsters and Memories, that spell book stays there on your body. You don't. What is that? Is there a sound? I'm seeing the, the mic sort of, I'm seeing it bounce a little bit. Is, is, there, is there a weird sound for you guys? I don't hear anything on my end. Yeah, because I'm watching, I'm watching the, the EQ or whatever kind of bounce right now. Okay, interesting. I guess it's just the Streamlabs. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. I don't have those spells. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, Mmocracy. The meta is going to be that people are going to leave spell books in the bank that have special, uh, specialized tool sets, specialized spells to help you get back to your body like in Viz and Buffs. And I say, yes, young Padawan, good. Uh, you are understanding what players will do. However, let me ask you, what if you were fighting in one of these zones that's out on the periphery? I swear, yeah, something's up with the mic. Mm, I'll look into it over the weekend. Let me know if it's if it's annoying the shit out of you. Because I'm, I'm watching it. There's got to be some sort of hiss or something going on on your end. Just maybe Liz's dog ears aren't hearing it. So apologies in advance. Free of the world, hunting elite mobs for the best loot, for the best experience, and you are miles away from a bank. What are you going to do then? And then that poses the question. When players are out there, are they going to like suicide a body and then leave a spell book on that body just in case? Are raids going to have to uh, have people's bodies parked outside of the raid zone uh, so that they have spells available to them to recover from a wipe? Uh, only time will tell, right? And those are some interesting questions for niche world cults, and I'd be curious to hear what, uh, what their thoughts are on that. Uh, but at, at any rate, uh, that gets to the heart of the discussion here today, which is why to have corpse runs or why not to have corpse runs. So uh, let's start with some of the arguments in favor of completely getting rid of corpse runs. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, I'm not going to state my opinion on this. I'm making this video just to generate discussions. So if you guys have opinions, I'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment below. Uh, but just to get into why not having corpse runs could be a good thing is uh, mainly comes down to the number one uh, biggest resource in life, which is time. Corpse runs are a time sink. Uh, they halt forward progress. And if you have limited time to play because of your responsibilities, a uh, corpse run could be a very devastating moment for you. So I do have a quote here from Discord user Outlaw Forever who states, as an adult with a very limited schedule, having nothing to show for a day or even weeks worth of free time is a massive concern for me. I don't mind corpse runs, but they shouldn't be so punishing you can't get your corpse. And then he goes on to say some other stuff, uh, but that kind of gets to the heart of the issue, which is uh, I am an adult, I have a, a limited time to play, I have a very demanding schedule, I have responsibilities, and a corpse run is uh, more or less like a barrier for me to enjoy this game. Um, one other uh, point that I could see people making is that a corpse run is essentially a quit moment. Now, if you've ever watched uh, popular MMO content creator Josh Strife Hayes, he describes a quit moment as a point in time where a player will uh, say, basically, screw it, I'm logging out and I'm never logging back in. Now, niche world cults, I don't think they're necessarily worried about this because the, the game is so niche that uh, virtually everybody should be expecting these corpse runs at this point. Uh, which brings me to the next point. So why have corpse runs? And here's where I have a quote from uh, Monsters and Memories developer Nick, who states, uh, no plans to change corpse runs unless we opt to open a different rule set server down the line that will do so. But the base rule set for this will be as is. So why do you think this is, uh, excuse me, uh, Nick's position? Why is this Niche World Cults' position? 
Uh, well, for, first of all, one of the points that I thought of is a uh, death mechanic, a punishing death mechanic like a corpse run essentially punishes poor performance. And the idea behind this is that it will eventually lead to better player performance because players who have had to level all the way up from level 1 to the max level dealing with these corpse runs and these experience loss moments on death are going to eventually learn and become better players and they'll perform better at the max level where the very hardest content should be. Um, in addition to that, uh, Discord user Redeker states that it, it can deter reckless player behavior um, and it's also a tool for social interaction. And I've witnessed this firsthand on games like Project 1999 where the dial a port guild, which is essentially a taxi service for teleporting people around the world, they'll offer free teleports for people on a corpse run, and at other times players will give buffs to people who are on corpse runs in an attempt to help them out. And so I can see how having that death mechanic like a corpse run uh, can help increase community collaboration and increase community cohesion as players work together to retrieve these corpses and lead to an overall uh, better social and community experience. Uh, in addition to that, uh, corpse runs represent uh, the risk versus reward element of gameplay, so uh, more risk should naturally equal more reward. So when you go to these more dangerous areas out on the periphery of the world, the elite zones to get the very best loot, there should be more risk there, uh, which then factors into the players deciding, okay, this is risky, but let's go, which then helps differentiate loot obtained from those zones, right? Because you might see that sword on the uh, that player in the city, and you go, oh man, he got that from this zone. That's a very dangerous zone. And, and so that also kind of lends itself back to that community discussion as well. And then finally, uh, corpse runs also in some way contribute to immersion. Uh, that deep, scary dungeon out there on the edge of the world, that, that abysmal place, uh, is a lot scarier when there's a real risk to it uh, for actually going there and dying. So um, it helps draw the player in. It helps make them feel more aware of their surroundings and what's going on, because if they die there, it could be a very bad situation. They could lose their corpse uh, potentially forever, right? Um, so we already know Niche World Cult's position on this, and I don't think this video is going to influence them uh, one way or another, and that's not the intent here. But I do want to hear from you guys, the player, the players, the community, and uh, see what you guys think. Are corpse runs a good thing for the reasons that I stated? Are there other reasons that I missed? Or are corpse runs a bad thing? And uh, what is your opinion on that? So if you've made it this far, uh, go ahead and drop a thumbs up on the video if you are down the line. I that thought I already did. Okay, so first of all, we need to talk about his Nick character. Base rule set for this will be at I'm not sure if he uh, cleared this statement with our PR department. Um, no, just kidding. So anyway, the, to some of the comments that... Uh, why did I just say just kidding? Obviously, I'm fucking kidding. Jeez. All right. Um, so anyway, Nick Redeker got quoted... Um, is, is niche pronounced like which or sheesh? Cause I've been saying it like niche Liz, since we, since we are fancier than most people, you and I will say niche. You're fancy by nature of living in Britain, I guess. You, you still have like royalty and I'm fancy just because I'm fancy. Um, the, so I say niche, but I don't say aunt. I say aunt. So that's where we may differ. Niche is niche. Okay. So we, I think we're more mostly on the, we're mostly on team niche in this chat. So, uh, overall awesome video. And honestly, I really appreciate him, um, taking the time to, to do this. And these videos are cool here. I'm going to link the video in chat so you guys can go um, comment or give a thumbs up and subscribe and stuff if you if you're into it I mean it'd be cool of you to do um, just like you should be subbing to our YouTube channel as well I mean we've only got like 3600 subs out of like close to 7k in uh, in discord so
so anyway, the 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 question that came up about um actually why did I turn the music on? Let's let's actually go back and listen to this again in some parts. I'm new to all of this. Uh blah, 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 blah. so quit moment as a point in time where for me to enjoy this game. Um for those of you that were commenting, he was just pointing out the fact that um your corpse and then he goes on to say some other stuff that some other people had that problem with with corpse runs but i mean it's just for us corpse runs are removing them is a non-starter because of the fact that we like all of the other things that he mentions here um yeah it may be a quit moment for some people but i've got the feeling um if josh hayes plays our game he'll probably find there's a, a whole number of quit moments in our game um, that some of which we may learn, hey, we need to uh, adjust those or it's not, it's not, uh, you know, it's not working the way it's intended or whatever. But uh, for the most part, that's, that's it's going to be our game. And, you know, it may be that there are some people, whether it be players or content creators or whatever, that play the game and don't, excuse me, don't like it. Um, Quit moment as a point in time where a player will... Uh, say basically screw it I'm logging out and I'm never logging back in now niche world cults I don't think they're necessarily worried about this because the the game is so niche that uh, virtually everybody should be expecting these corpse runs at this point uh, which brings me to the next point so why have corpse runs and here's where I have a quote from uh, Monsters and Memories developer Nick who states uh, no plans to change corpse runs unless we opt to open a different rule set server down the line that will do so <laughs> oh, again. for this will be as is so why do you think this is mon uh, excuse me uh, Nick I thought of is a uh, death mechanic a punishing death mechanic like a corpse run essentially punishes poor performance um, and it's not it's not just that it punishes poor for performance there there are going to be those times where it's uh, just weird shit happens right like it's not poor performance if somebody just happens to train by and all of a sudden you snag a couple of extra mobs that you weren't planning um, to deal with right like but so what it what it creates is it does create a situation in which um, poor performance will be punished it also creates there's just a underlying danger that's there and that danger works with all of the other emergent sort of uh, uh, situations or, or uh, mechanics that are in the game. Right. And um, yeah. So link, link death, snare breaks, gating because of, yeah. So uh, it, all of those various pieces can come in there to create an oh shit moment. And the when you've got people that are truly good players, then you can have a cascade of oh shit, like bad sort of scenarios collide with each other, and the the group will still recover, right? Like little Timmy goes link dead about the same time that Sally's low on mana, and some dipshit ran by with an extra like you know mob or two and maybe they ran through and you know they're going to be coming back at some point and you just you just all of a sudden you're like let's burn this other mob down like positioning in that situation like all of these things um you could still potentially recover and at the end of it you're like holy shit go us and it's from still a a relatively simple set of mechanics right like i i think that is way more compelling than just i mean to me that that experience is that is the old experience before just running dungeons uh deaths need to be meaningful yes and they they should be kind of scary now or up above you guys are saying good stuff but up above Ollie mentioned something that stuck with me. Um, Redeker was quoted, and Redeker was kind enough to point out that Redeker was correct. Fair enough. Uh, Ollie said, 
absolutely absolutely a social tool they get into that right because now it also it's social in many ways it's social in you watch who you group with especially if you're like "Ah, i've got a i don't want to do a corpse recovery tonight and and this is where ollie gets into i don't dungeon every time i play exactly so hey i'm limited time tonight so are you going to go into the dungeon are you going to go into the dungeon with a group that you don't know right um are you going to pick up that rando where you need to fill a spot or whatever where you're like uh maybe this person's got a bad reputation or maybe we just don't know them and even if you are in a dungeon are you going to maintain certain camps right how many times have you been in a dungeon where you lose a member or something happens or it's a a pickup group or whatever and you realize that hey your your key person or the person that you know or just something changes about your group composition and you decide you're going to move to a different camp because of that it's like can we hold this camp can we hold this camp is a is an awesome question to have to ask right um and that's telling because again from a content development standpoint, the difference in those camps doesn't necessarily need to be super complex in terms of implementation. Aramisk, have a great one, have a great weekend. Um, it could just be the position of the camp. And for us, it's interesting because we can make a dungeon that, um, you know, just, just in where we're laying out those camps, uh, we're, we're able to start to account, um, we can start to account for the possibility of those incidents. Redeker says, this is the full quote he took from, is this, are, are you quoting you? This is your quote, I think, but it's a big block. So I'm going to, uh, not every game is going to appeal to every person. If you can't appreciate a uh, corpse run being a deterrent to reckless gameplay, and understand that it's there as an incentive to be a better player and prepare more than you would in um, in a game that prefers to hold your hand while also understanding that it is a tool for social interaction and dependency. There are plenty of other games you can play that value your time and treat you like a child. Little salty, there's, there's a little salt on that, but generally speaking, agree. But uh, again, it's not the whole game, right? So I think a number of people are are hitting on this point. Um, we can design dungeons in a way where there are areas that are more or less risky, right? And, it, and it's a conscious choice. It's, am I just in here for XP? So I can, you know, I'm going to stay at this camp or one of the other camps if I even go into dungeon. Or are we going really into a spot where we know we've got to be on our toes, right? And without that possibility of wiping, then then we don't really have the we don't we don't have the option to give you that experience. Nick said, "Not all MMOs should have the exact same va- values." I'm glad I can go play a game that has no corpse runs and instances. Um, then I'm also glad I can hop on P99 and wipe in TOV at 3 a.m. while competing for dragons. Exactly. And I and I think it's really important um, for games to know what they want to be. And because if we don't know what we want to be and we're not willing to kind of stick with that definition, then how are you guys going to know what we are in order to decide whether or not you want to invest your time and money in us? Um. And above, let's see, Sna said there are roles in a group that are a bit more responsibility heavy if you're a bad puller versus just bad DPS in a group. Yep. And that is one of those things too where it's funny, just the the matrix of classes and then the application of classes to different environments or roles um, allow for there to be so many different player types that are catered to again within a relatively simple context because it may be that somebody's not 
super comfortable in their class, but they then don't necessarily have to put themselves in a scenario where they have to be very comfortable with their class. And they're still able to advance. They're still able to potentially get certain items, right? So I think that's one of the other things that was that was kind of nice about the old games. Um, Robert says the stress a group gets about back spawns and dungeons also super neat. Are we in a hurry to kill the group of mobs ahead? Uh, can we med for another minute, or will stuff start um, stuff pop here soon? Love that. Yep, exactly. And let's see. John said bad reputation. So you're talking about Nick? Are you kidding me, Nick? You know how I can't even make jokes about it. You know how much Nick's carried me when we have played in the past. Um. Let's see. Ruskin82 says, and those are moments you remember. We already have enough games that run on safety rails. And I would, I would say it's not even like necessarily the safety rail thing. It's, it's just there are enough experiences that just don't stick in your memory, right? And so, I mean, it could be because it's like safety rails or it's just it's kind of milk toast. It's kind of like a, yeah. So let's see, somebody asked above, and I don't remember who said it, um, but somebody asked if you can park pack animals outside of dungeons. And so again, the things like dropping the spell book on, um, with your corpse and other stuff. So Defiant Possum knows you, cool. Yeah, so that's what we're looking at. It's like, we wanna, we'll be playing around with whether or not you uh, can have your pack animal directly outside a dungeon or if we're gonna provide certain you know, nearby locations where you tend to put mounts or pack animals. So that's something we were gonna play with. Um, Nick's been talking about getting um, stash boxes in the game for quite a while now, right? So. Um, it could be that you or somebody that uh, is in your group or somebody that you know has the ability to set up a little stash box somewhere nearby. So um, it could be, you know, so there, there are a number of things that we're looking at to potentially help mitigate some of these, um, some of these constraints that we're putting in or some of these problems that we're putting in, right? So the idea is to go back to putting problems into the game to give you um, the ability then to mitigate them in an interesting way that continues to leverage progression or forward thinking or whatever, right? So um, it's not said, oh, that would be a cool survival thing, like a one to two slot bank you can place in uh, the world. Do you lose experience when you die? Yes, you do. Um, and the other thing then is, the uh, as in the number of people were saying, and, and he mentioned here. Um, and the idea behind this is, it was uh, like Dialaport. Dialaport providing that service of helping people get back to their corpses. How badass is that? Can you use an ogre as a pack animal? Uh, in a roundabout way, you could. Yes, Redeker. Uh, but it would be, there's there's a lot of consent going on in that scenario. So there's a lot of consent. And so <clears throat> now I don't think we're going to give the ogre an extra bank, like an extra inventory slot, if you know what I mean. But, um, but, oh well, yeah, I guess, but's kind of a pun in that. But yeah. So anyway, the the idea of guilds like Dialaport existing, is, it's just fantastic, and it's because of situations like this. Um, you know, again having classes that can go and help with corpse recovery, having um, in any number of ways, whether that be a rogue or whether that be a monk or whether that be a necro. Um, so, yeah, and then somebody else mentioned, um, somebody else mentioned, where was it? Oh, the idea of us, of us putting in a, like, putting in the ability to have um, corpses ultimately make their way back to like a temple or an adventurer's guild or something of that nature after X amount of time. Right. So maybe it's been, maybe it's been 48 hours or maybe it's been 72 hours or a week or whatever. And your, 
you haven't been able to recover your corpse from the dungeon or from that weird pit that you fell into or whatever it is. Um, the idea of there being a cost associated with a recovery mechanism that is um, less player dependent has been something that's on the table and we will play around with some mechanics like that. But if, if, if the shit's not stressful initially, then we can't, we can't really make it feel right. Like we, we can't recreate that sort of like level of anxiety and that, Oh shit factor that will make folks pay attention. Um, has anyone been watching delicious in dungeon yet? The EverQuest references feel so on point. The main Stark asked, uh, let me, interesting. Oh, wait, that's a, okay. I've heard about that before. Yeah. Um, it's been 34 days since I've seen this corpse. So good to finally get it back. Yeah, maybe not that extreme. Um, I would say 24 hours, but then people might just log off to the next day. Yeah, so I, I, I do think it needs to be a bit longer than something like 24 hours. That, that just feels way too short for the mechanic to me, unless there was just like a really uh, interesting cost. Um, could it be dependent on where as well? 24 hours for close outdoor zones, 48 hours for dungeons, 72 hours for higher level zones. Hmm, maybe. Uh, there was something else. I feel like the point, but I, uh, overall, I feel like the points that he hit were good. And it seemed like you guys, um, were nodding along with it. Better players at in game tool for social interaction, uh, community collaboration. I think we've covered. So I think we covered it. Um, but yeah, so MMOocracy, um, cool video. Thank you for making it. I hope we responded to everything that you had asked about. Immersion, yeah, making the dungeons feel sketchy. Risk versus reward. And it, the cool thing is, is that we can get pretty granular with the risk versus reward. Right? Because uh, again, how we design the dungeon is going to be It's right. So it's like Oops. So, I mean, this is like bedroom in Guck, right? You know, it's just the the odds of you being trained in this room kind of are what they are if this is the exit i would say that this room's kind of a shitty scenario to be in right but that's also maybe why it's Hey, we come in here for XP. We know that we're probably going to be trained every once in a while. And the second we can get out of this camp and into one of these other camps, um, you know, that's what we're shooting for. Whereas 
then let's see this camp being where it is. Maybe there's better, we can set up the scenario where there's better loot. It's a better camp, but you've got a farther travel distance to the exit. And depending on whether or not um, anybody's camping here, uh, you may have that in a way as well. Whereas this camp is closer to the exit. It's off the path, so you're not gonna get trained, right? So it's like it, at least, three different dynamics and this camp may, depending on what's going on, if we've got a, oops. MS Paint's not my friend right now. It could be because it's never just gonna be one box, right? Like. It could be that because of the fact that there's a couple of areas that we're pulling here, we've got some roamers and stuff that path through here that we don't have at this other camp, right? So it's just like simple little pieces of the puzzle that we're snapping together here and looking at like the combination of the layout and the, the pop um, then allows us to drive like the risk versus reward at any given camp. And over time, we're gonna find that, especially since dungeons typically are a lot more elaborate than this in terms of their design, we're gonna find certain camps emerging. We're gonna drive some of the camp behavior just based off of the way that the dungeon's designed and the, you know, the, um, and the spawns in it, et cetera. But we, we can follow some, some basic ideas of like deeper in the dungeon is sketchier and thus more rewarding. And, but it's all predicated off the fact that shit can go wrong. Right, so. And sometimes that pather is unnamed and so it brings extra risk when it pops. Could benefit from having a tracker let you know what to expect. And Sometimes that pather is a, a variable spawn, so it could be that sometimes it's just a fighter, but other times it's a, a healer that's coming into the mix or a wizard, right? So you're keeping your eyes on that as well. And again, those are really simple variables to tweak for us to make a, a more interesting experience. And it, again, like the level of complexity of any, any given dungeon, um, is going to be significantly higher than what I was just mapping out there. So it, it allows us to play around with uh, some of those pieces. Um, maybe there's dungeon loot that doesn't return with your corpse when, uh, when it teleports out. Interesting. Um, Some interesting necrophilia jokes. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Dragon says, and it's an incentive to get the corpse. Have a min max XP loss per time corpse goes unretrieved. Oh, so sort of max recovery. If it's been if it's been sitting. Or, yeah, so it's interesting because the the idea then with either like a, a temple or necro's guild or adventurer's guild recovering your corpse at that point it, it could be that it, there's no you get the corpse back but you're not recovering your XP, uh, XP loss from that we'll have to play with that um, Snow said, and it doesn't seem like a difficult tweak. Just add a couple more mobs to a spawn point, um, spawn box, and let it play out. Exactly. Yep. Um, it's it's something where, hell, I mean, we can we can tune that in real time as we're play testing and, and watching it, right? So. Corpse bounties at the entrance to dungeons. Put an NPC that's part of an organization like Silent Sisters in Game of Thrones. A uh, dungeon entrance that gives bounties to players to recover player bodies. 
we need to, we need something that is a little more a little more general because the second you start putting something like that at the beginning of every dungeon does it feel kind of feels kind of gamey Then maybe having dynamic spawn patterns that can uh, be changed by devs when they see people too comfy in one spot. Oh, that's mean though. We don't we don't want to do that. We're not we're not necessarily here to torture people. But now it's it was always fun to spawn NPCs when somebody was exploiting something. Redeker says when your corpse rots and is summonable by the NPC or whatever system, Night Harbor shouldn't be able to get any experience back. Incentive to act quick and get your corpse. I, I honestly, I think that's fair. We'll we'll play with it and and see where we land, but um, I don't necessarily think that's a, a horrible penalty, personally. Yeah. So. Do you feel like we missed anything from that video? Are we good on corpse recovery and why and all of that? I'm just keeping an eye on the time and I want to make sure I wrap, wrap that topic up. That method of corpse recovery is probably the last option. Yeah, it really, it, it is. It is the... I mean, because again, anything we put in that's uh, NPC driven or system driven <clears throat> that potentially removes some of the value of player interaction, like we just really want to be careful with. Cool. Well, so far tonight we have then we've gone through, we've looked at the biome video. Again, if you've come in here late or more recently or whatever, you haven't seen the biome video, um, be sure to check it out on our YouTube. Uh, you can find us there if you're new to this whole thing. Um, the update has been added. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff in there. If you're not in the habit of checking our updates, you really should be. Uh, you're missing some really fun concept art and images. Uh, you get to see the new orc model. Those of you that are checking all the various streams, uh, you know, may not be news to you. But um, for other folks that are just popping in every once in a while, um, definitely check that out. Uh, let's see. We checked a bio video. We watched uh, MMOcracy's video, which I've been wanting to do for like a, a week. Um, I think, I think we're good. Those of you that aren't in our Discord, be sure to join the Discord. Oops, we're playing some other Robert music. He's not going to copy strike at me. Me is he? It's so funny. This is a newer one, actually. You guys should all be sub to Robert's. You should be sub to Robert's YouTube as well. And just listening to random music there. Because he does a lot of different music. So hit that up. Um, but it was funny. Like as soon as, as soon as Robert reached out to us and checked out his music page, it was... It was a no brainer. It was like, oh my God, this is too good to be true. Um, cool, man. I think you must be due your monthly mail updates. It'll be firing off at 5 p.m. Eastern. It's automatically scheduled. MailChimp told me that's the ideal time to send it today. So it's going to fire off at that point. Let me know if you have any issues with it. 
Uh, I'm going to wrap up for tonight. It's Friday night. It's almost 11 o'clock. Um, and I, uh, I'm i winding down. Caffeine's worn off. Uh, I feel like we've covered some okay ground tonight. Um, and I appreciate all of you being here. So I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. I want everybody to have a wonderful weekend. Remember, next week is um, Wednesday, Wednesday, Friday again. Um, my new schedule, but I will start at, uh, when is it? Um, 3 p.m. Eastern, I think. Yeah. No, 2 p.m. Eastern, six hours ahead. And so I'll see you then. Uh, let's see. Kamathar, see you. Good night. Nicodemus, uh, yep, answered your question. Sna, thanks for being here. Um, the team, a lot of them are in here. So they thank you for your kindness, but always feel, uh, always know that I'm definitely passing it along. Um, and be sure to subscribe, comment on the YouTube videos. They'll, they'll see that as well. Cause we'll send them there. Um, defiant possum. See ya. Ida fab. See ya. Nike. Uh, yeah. Good night, Nick. Um, Chinny D you're welcome. Thanks for being here. Keeps. See you buddy. Oh, I've got a DM from you. Keeps. I need to respond to shit. Don't let me forget. Um, shoot me another DM, please, so that it'll reactivate my notification. Dozakar, see you. Darius, see you. Lisava, good night. I will crash. Well, um, Liz, have a wonderful weekend yourself. Yeah, I'm the finger, um, but thank you. Thadvik, see you. Justin Beard, I hope you're feeling better. Um, get to feeling better. Rest up over the weekend, buddy. We don't want you sick. John, see you. Death by Gnomes, see you. Robert, see you, buddy. Um, Serenth, good night. Dragon, Toodles, Jintaki, goodbye. Gumbus, bye. And Redeker, I'm sure we'll see you in Discord. D loves pudding. Have a great weekend, buddy. All right. I'm going to hit the button. Everybody have a wonderful weekend. Be safe out there. If you're not feeling good, rest up, and I will see you on Wednesday.